To formally welcome us to this webinar, we have with us our Executive Director, Engineer Noel C. Dinan. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all. First of all, I would like to begin by welcoming everyone to this eighth episode of the mag Oshap Tayo webinar series, which is a prelude to the coming National Occupational Safety and Health Congress on September. Today, our discussions will be focused on asbestos and the department order number 154-16, or the safety and health standards on the use and management of asbestos, asbestos in the workplace. This issuance is geared towards activities which expose the workers to asbestos in the workplace, such as in the construction, in manufacturing, dismantling and disposal, and other industrial activities that have asbestos or asbestos containing products. Further, this order ensures the protection of workers involved in the handling of such chemicals. Let us fully take advantage of this opportunity to gain more knowledge, which will be beneficial in strengthening our safety and health program. I know that the COVID-19 pandemic has created many challenges, but it also forced us to give priority to the safety and health of our workers to reduce the number of incidents in the workplace while keeping business afloat. We at the Occupational Safety and Health Center cannot do it alone. We need partners like you in promoting the culture of OSH. Before I end, I would like to thank everyone for your unending support in our activities and advocacies. Sa inyo pong lahat, take care and maraming salamat at lagi pong tandaan, safety first. Thank you very much, sir. For ado, let us all welcome our senior industrial hygienist, Engineer Melba F. Marasigan, to discuss ano nga po ba ang mga hazards na pwede ibigay sa atin ng paggamit ng asbestos at paano po ang mga paraan para maiwasan po natin na tayo ay magkasakit o maaksidente habang tayo nagtatrabaho at gumagamit ng asbestos sa ating trabaho. Ma'am Melba, good morning. Good morning. So I would like to share first my PowerPoint. Okay, nakikita na po ba? Yes po. Okay, so for this morning, uh, ano in, lang po, uh, mag ay oo nga pala, sandali, pa full, screen. pa full screen natin. Okay, okay na? Yes, po. Okay, so for this morning, we will be discussing Department Order Number 154 that was released in 2016. This pertains to the safety and health standards on the use and management of asbestos in the workplace. So, hindi pa rin natin maiiwasan, may mga existing pa rin na paggamit ng asbestos sa Pilipinas. Okay, so for this department order, under Section 1, we have the scope and coverage. Sino po ba ang kasama na dapat ay magpatupad nitong department order na ito? So lahat po ng mga activities that exposes the workers to asbestos in the workplace. So this is applicable to asbestos-related activities in construction, manufacturing, dismantling activities, uh, disposal, and other industrial activities that have asbestos or asbestos-containing materials. Under Section 2, we need to define some terms. First of all, ano ba yung tinatawag nating asbestos? So the term asbestos is actually a form of fibrous 
mineral silicates that belongs to the two groups of serpentine and amphibole groups of rock forming minerals that includes actinolite, amosite, known as the brown asbestos, antophyllite, chrysotile, or white asbestos, crocidolite, or blue asbestos, tremolite, or any other mixture that contains one or more of the mineral silicates that belongs to these serpentine and amphibole groups. So just to give you a uh, view of what asbestos look like. So this uh, picture shows you the different uh, forms of asbestos, which is known as amosite. So by its color, uh, it is brown in color. So for the upper picture, it is uh, viewed in the microscope. So you can see that it is hair-like uh, property. And then for the chrysotile type of asbestos, so basically the color is white. So the uh, fibers are actually encapsulated in the rock form that, as, uh, that are mined no, in the uh, asbestos mining site. And usually these white asbestos are imported. So uh, before we, my, uh, we import asbestos in Canada, but now they stopped the production. So our white asbestos comes from Russia. So it must be noted that there is no asbestos mine in the Philippines. Okay, so this one is the feature of the blue asbestos. So as depicted, the color of the fibers is blue. So you can see it is more of a hair-like property or hair-like uh, features for this type of fibers of asbestos. Okay, next we define the asbestos containing materials. This is actually any material or object or products or debris that contain asbestos. So as you can see in the picture, uh, this is a simple uh, roofing material that is considered as an asbestos containing material. So the asbestos is actually mixed with cement and sand. Okay, so let us check what is the mixture of this asbestos containing materials. So this is actually made from mixture of cement and asbestos, including sand, that according to the manufacturers, the proportion is for roofing or wall boards, we have 5 to 10% asbestos fiber in the material. And then for the gasket, we have 40 to 50% uh, asbestos fiber in the gasket material. So in the Philippines, uh, there are uh, about 17 to 18 companies that still uses asbestos fiber. And this is uh, being regulated by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Okay, another term is asbestos containing product. This is actually any product or part thereof to which asbestos is deliberately or knowingly added or used in any concentration. Okay, another one is the asbestos containing waste. This means they, uh, they are processed residues from manufacturing operations and customer discards of manufactured products. And then we have this ARD or the asbestos related diseases. This means a disease caused by inhalation of asbestos fibers. And then we have to know also about threshold limit values. This refers to airborne concentration of chemical substances and represents any conditions under which it is believed that nearly all workers may be exposed day after day over a working lifetime without adverse health effects. So it is also uh, referring to the limits of substances set by the DOLE, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. 
And then the wet methods, this pertains particularly for the use of asbestos being handled, mixed, applied, removed, cut, scored, or otherwise worked in a wet state sufficient to prevent the emissions of airborne fibers so as not to expose the workers to a level that is in excess of the time-weighted average unless the usefulness of the product would be diminished thereby. Okay, so for section three, we have asbestos safety and health program. So these are the elements of the program. We have hazard identification and risk assessment and control. Number two, information, education, and training. Access to occupational health and medical services. Medical examination. The post-retirement medical monitoring. The reportorial requirement and compensation and rehabilitation so we have two four six we have seven elements for the asbestos safety and health program so now we will be discussing one by one the seven elements so for the first element uh, it is said that the use of alternative or replacement materials for asbestos is recommended whenever feasible the control uh, of the exposure of workers to asbestos may be through any of the following, but not limited oh, to the use of these uh, items. Number one, we have uh, proper enclosure or isolation of work area must be instituted. A provision of an efficient local exhaust ventilation system and negative pressure ventilation. The use of HEPA vacuum cleaners and wet methods during asbestos cleanup and the use of wet methods or processes in any of the activities using asbestos. Okay, so in relation to this element, we also need to observe safe work practices such as establishment of a regulated area where Access must be limited to trained and authorized personnel. So, hindi pwedeng pumasok ang mga hindi trained personnel o sabihin natin mga kapwa trabahador within the uh, company or within the organization na walang training pertaining to asbestos. Next, the entry and exit must be through a decontamination unit consisting of a connected equipment room, shower room, and clean room. In, an, in a certain workplace, for example, dismantling, there should be an area designated for the contamination area. So ang sinasabi, kompleto ang kanyang facilities with respect to uh, provision of shower rooms. And then uh, we should also provide warning signs on asbestos that should be displayed in conspicuous places in accordance with occupational safety and health standards. Okay, so likewise, we need to provide appropriate respiratory protection and whole body protective clothing. This may include head coverings, gloves, goggles, foot coverings for all workers that handles asbestos. This is also in reference to Rule 1080 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. Okay, so for the first diagram, we have here the half-face respirator, wherein the cartridge is more of a cloth type. But for this uh, diagram, you can see a, a type of respirator that is also considered as half-paste, but uh, considering the filter that use is different from the first diagram. So uh, the workers can use the half-paste or what we call the dual cartridge respirator with 100 HEPA filters in asbestos concentration up to one fiber 
per milliliter. Okay. So in relation to the protective clothing, these are the examples that can be used during asbestos activities. So you, we have these coveralls. Of course, uh, every part of the body should have cover, including the head, the hands, and the feet. Okay. So uh, part of the requirement of the provisions for Section 3 is the conduct of the work environment measurement. This is in relation to Rule 1070 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. So ano ba yung tinatawag nating work environment measurement? So this refers to the determination of the magnitude of environmental hazards and their hazardous effects on workers' health through the direct measurement of hazards using different industrial hygiene equipment. Okay, so we have two types of exposure assessment in relation to asbestos. We, we have this personal sampling. As you can see in the picture, a sampling pump is attached at the waist of the worker. It is connected by a rubber tubing holding the filter holder at the lapel near the breathing zone of the worker. So the holder consists of a typical filter paper that absorbs or that collects the asbestos fibers in the air while the worker is doing his job. So this personal sampling is actually the measurement of a particular worker's exposure to uh, airborne contaminants. So direct exposure for personal sampling. And then the data collected approximates the concentration of the contaminant by which the worker is exposed to. Okay. Another type of monitoring is what we call the area or the environmental sampling. It is the measurement of asbestos contaminant in the particular workroom. This helps pinpoint work areas with high or low exposure level. So let us look at the diagram. So this one is the feature for area sampling. So we have a sampling pump. Again, it is connected by a rubber tubing to the filter holder. And this sampling pump is actually set into a certain flow rate and uh, positioned in a certain work area wherein there are activities related to use of asbestos. And it will be set there for a period of time to capture asbestos fibers in the workroom. Okay, so with that, we have measurement, no, both personal and uh, area sampling. So what are we going to do with our measurement? So after determining the exposure to asbestos, the filter paper that was used for sampling will be analyzed in the laboratory. Okay, so after analysis, we have to compare the results of measurement with occupational safety and health standards. And uh, the threshold limit value for asbestos is equal to 0 0.1 fiber per cubic centimeter. Okay. Again, another provision is we have to designate an accredited and competent safety officer that must be trained on the safe management of asbestos so that he can carry out the implementation of the asbestos safety program. So that means for every company that utilizes uh, asbestos or any activities with relation to asbestos, there should be an asbestos safety program. Okay, uh, the company shall also implement a smoke-free workplace policy program uh, provision of proper, proper labeling of asbestos containing materials or products. So, dapat may mga labels. No? This is in uh, compliance with the Department Order 136 14 
and chemical control order for asbestos that is provided by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Okay. We also have to keep an updated asbestos inventory in order to determine the presence, location, and quantity of asbestos at the work site. And in terms of disposal, uh, disposal follows the de uh, Department Administrative Order 2013-22 also of the DNR. Okay. So another element for Section 3 for the program, we have this information, education, and training. So, napapaloob dito, no? iba't ibang klaseng training na pinoprovide. So, we have information and training on the safe use of chrysotile type of asbestos and asbestos-containing materials for workers, contractors, and to those who may come in contact with asbestos-containing materials in the workplace, whether directly or indirectly ang kanilang contact. Then another training is in relation to proper methods and procedures of dismantling asbestos containing materials. So again, this is for workers. No? Uh, this is in relation or in compliance with uh, Department Administrative Order Number 2000-02 and Chemical Control Order for Asbestos Plus. Department Administrative Order 2013-22, all four DNR provisions. Okay. Another training is pertaining to the training of safety officers on recognition, evaluation, and control of chrysotile type of asbestos and asbestos-containing materials. Okay. So another training in relation to the company's occupational health and safety uh, personnel in relation to the prevention, diagnosis, and rehabilitation of asbestos-related diseases by OSHC, Department of Health, the Lung Center of the Philippines, the ECC, and other training institutions that are capable of providing the training on asbestos and asbestos-related concerns. So, lahat ng tinetrain natin, no? Workers pertaining to the different activities na nihahandle natin, training for safety officers and training for health personnel. Okay. So, now we discuss about access to Occupational Health and Medical Services, which is another element in Section 3. So we have pre-employment examination that must be provided for workers that are newly hired. So this is in relation to Rule 1967.01 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards and Rule 3 under Section B of the IRR of PD-626 as amended. So the test uh, shall include uh, analysis of the history of exposure, the pertinent medical history, the standardized respiratory disease questionnaire which falls under Annex 1, and the pulmonary lung function test and chest x-ray. Okay. So another type of exam which is relate in relation to periodic annual medical examination. So same reference, no? Rule 1967.03 of the standards and Rule 3, Section 2B of the Presidential Decree 626. So this shall be conducted that must be free of charge to the workers. Ano ang purpose natin? We have to follow, in order to follow up previous findings, and in order to allow early detection of occupational and non-occupational diseases. And last, we have to determine the effects of exposure of workers to health hazards. 
Okay. Part of this uh, uh, section to occupational health and medical services is what we call the medical surveillance program that must be also provided. So this is in relation to Rule 1967 of the standards and Rule 3, Section 2B of the Presidential Decree 626. So ano ang sinasabi dito sa provisions na to? So number one, the worker should be monitored to prevent occupational diseases. Ano-ano yung mga dapat i-monitor? We have uh, collection and epidemiologic analysis of relevant environmental and biological monitoring. Next, there is a medical screening. Then we have this morbidity and mortality data. And that all medical records of workers shall be made available to government agencies, particularly the Department of Labor and Employment and the Department of Health. Okay, part of this medical surveillance program, if any worker leaves the company or shall resign, he shall be examined by the occupational health physician in order to determine if this worker is still suffering from any occupational diseases or any illness which has not completely healed and any injury he has sustained. So this should be uh, the same uh, examination with respect to pre-employment and periodic medical examination. Okay. So maraming provisions no, for medical surveillance program. Another one is that the medical examinations and procedures must be conducted by or under the supervision of a licensed occupational health physicians or pulmonologists. So the attending physician must report any significant findings to the chief operations officer or the manager of the company as part of the work accident or illness report. Okay. So the medical examination also must be conducted at no cost to the worker and at reasonable time and place. So the access to treatment will be provided by the company based on the PhilHealth and ECC benefits. So the Department of Health may refer the patients or the worker to the Lung Center of the Philippines for further medical evaluation that may be necessary. Okay. So under Section 3, we also have this uh, post-retirement medical monitoring. So this uh, shall be facilitated by ECC and OSHC. So tandaan natin, hindi porke nag-resign na o nag-retire na ang worker, wala na tayong binibigay na medical examination. So meron pa rin dapat pinoprovide for the workers. So under letter F is the reportorial requirements. So ano ang duties ng ating mga employer? So uh, the employer shall provide the Bureau of Working Conditions and the Dole Regional Offices of an annual report pertaining to the status of the worker that was diagnosed with asbestos-related diseases in addition to the reportorial requirements of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. So the employer shall likewise provide full support to the worker deserving of compensation and rehabilitation benefits. Okay, so in terms of reportorial requirements, so we have this provide data such as work environment measurement reports on health hazards and other information that may deem necessary by the SSS, the GSIS, or the ECC, 
in the determination of causal relationship of the worker's exposure with the disability or death. So, sa reports, dalawa, no? Medical reports and the result of work environment measurement. Okay. So, puntahan naman natin yung provision with respect to compensation and rehabilitation. So, anong sinasabi sa provision na to? All workers that was diagnosed with work-related illness due to exposure to asbestos in his workplace shall be compensated based on board resolution number 12-09-18. This amends the conditions for compensations of pneumonia, bronchial asthma, pneumoconiosis, and asbestosis, and other pulmonary conditions as amended by the Employees' Compensation Commission. Okay, another provision in relation to compensation and rehabilitation is that the worker shall perform his or her job based on the prescribed safety practices and standards and endeavor to report unsafe conditions and practices. This is in compliance with Rule 1046 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. Okay. Ano naman ang uh, uh, parte ng worker? So, meron siyang responsibility also. No? The worker shall cooperate with the employer in the implementation of the occupational safety and health policy and program. And then, the worker shall also comply with the prescribed safety and hygiene procedures relating to the prevention and control of and protection against health hazards of exposure to asbestos. So, may role ang employer my role din ang workers. Okay. Now we proceed to section 4. This pertains to occupational exposure limits. So the Dole Memorandum Circular Number uh, 02 Series of 1998, uh, it was classified that the manufacturer or handling of asbestos and other similar products are considered as hazardous processes. The worker shall have as close to zero occupational exposure limits as reasonably as practicable in no case shall be exceeded that the TLD for asbestos of 0.1 fiber per cubic centimeter, centimeter of an air in, in an eight-hour work period. So, hindi dapat ma-exceed ang ating threshold limit value for asbestos. Okay. So, we have this Section 5, which is part of this department order. It pertains to monitoring compliance. So, the Bureau of Working Conditions, through the Dole uh, regional offices shall monitor the compliance to these guidelines and other pertinent provisions of the occupational safety and health standards and other related laws and policies through the labor law compliance system. So the establishment that uses uh, hazardous chemicals such as asbestos as are classified as highly hazardous and as such are considered as priority establishments for joint assessments. This is in relation to the Rule 1013 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards and Dole number uh, 02 series of 1998, which pertains to the guidelines for classification of hazardous and non-hazardous workplaces. And then pertaining to the Health and Safety Committee, uh, they shall implement and monitor its asbestos safety program. Okay. 
another element is the section 6, which pertains to periodic review. So, ang sinasabi sa provision na to, the DOLE shall periodically review or update these guidelines as frequent as necessary. As chair of the occupational health sector of the uh, interagency committee on environmental health or the ESA, the DOLE shall oversee the regular use of these guidelines. And then under section 7, which pertains to the repealing clause, the provision says that all other laws, orders, issuances, the rules and regulations contrary to or inconsistent with any provisions of these guidelines are hereby repealed, amended, or modified accordingly. Okay. So I think this is the last slide which pertains to penalties. So all violations of the provisions of these guidelines shall be subjected to the applicable penalties uh, provided in the Labor Code of the Philippines as amended and P Presidential Decree 626 as amended as well as other related laws. Uh, there is still one provision. So Section 9 pertains to transitory provisions. So all establishments manufacturing asbestos containing materials and those that are engaged in demolition activities shall be required to comply with all the requirements of these guidelines within six months from effectivity hereof. So this was uh, released in April 2016. So um, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So October of 2016, naging effective itong, uh, ah, within that period of six months, dapat ay makakomply na with the requirements. Okay. So all workers who may be rendered jobless, na wala ng trabaho dahil nagkaroon ng violations sa guidelines na dito sa department order na to, I will be assisted by the Department of Labor and Employment through the provisions of job assistance, retraining, and provisions of uh, livelihood opportunities to ease the burden of displacement. Uh, okay, so that ends my discussion on the department order pertaining to safe management of asbestos. So we welcome now for the possible questions. I will stop Thank you share. so much. Thank you okay. so much, um, Ma Melba, for yes. um, the comprehensive discussion. And meron po tayo mga katanungan. Oh, huh? Okay. From Mr. Arvin Lacchio of Excellent Tech Screeners, um, what chemicals contain asbestos? Siguro po ay mas fit na tanong ay ano ang materials na nagko-contain ng asbestos? Karamihan po ng mga materials na nagko-contain ng asbestos ay yung mga ginagamit natin sa construction. So ano-ano yung mga materials sa construction? Meron tayo mga roofing materials, kagaya nung picture na pinakita ko kanina sa asbestos containing material. So yung corrugated roofing cement, meron din tayo mga ginagamit sa construction na wall board, so yung mga pang partition. Meron din tayong ginagamit na kisame, no, ceiling boards. Plus aside from construction, meron din tayong mga insulation materials. Insulation materials saan ginagamit sa ating mga boilers, no? sa mga pipelines na usually yung mga binibigyan ng insulation na asbestos ay yung mga uh, equipment na maiinit because uh, ang ating pong asbestos ay very high resistance to heat. Kaya uh, mas pini-prefer ang paggamit ng insulation material that contains asbestos. And uh, isa pang nabanggit ko kanina, yung ating uh, gasket no, na ginagamit sa sakyan, meron po yung asbestos. And there are also cases na present ang asbestos sa mga uh, vinyl tiles. Hindi lang natin napapansin 
at na-scrutinize kasi encapsulated ang asbestos fibers sa mga materials na itong nabanggit ko. Idudugtong po na rin po, um, Ma'am Melba, yung okay ibang po. tanong tungkol sa mga um, materials na nagpocontain ng asbestos. Meron po siya dito, um, si Ma'am Rosa Torino, may asbestos content po ba ang Hardy Flex? Ah, wala pong content na asbestos ang hardy flex kasi po ang component na ginagamit po sa pagmanufacture ng hardy flex ay silica based. Yan po ay pinatunayan ah, kung hindi ako nagkakamali. Indonesian po kasi at galing din sa Malaysia ang ibang materials na ginagamit po sa paggawa ng hardy flex. What about sa wires po? Meron po bang asbestos ang mga wires? Ah, parang wala akong na-encounter na presence ng asbestos sa wires. So tandaan po natin, para ma-check natin kung ang asbestos material, ay, ay kung ang any material ay merong presence of asbestos, meron tayong tinatawag na qualitative check. So ano yung qualitative check? So hindi natin kailangan magpa-laboratory, no? So meron tayong tinatawag na burning test. So kumuha tayo ng kapirasong sample ng material and then sunugin natin. Pagka may presence po ng asbestos, hindi po nasusunog ang material. Pero pag nasunog ang material, ibig sabihin po walang presence of asbestos. So yun po yung isang very feasible test na pwede natin gawin ng kahit sino. Maraming salamat po. Ayan, madali na natin ngayon na kumbaga madedetermine na tayo masyadong mahuhula. Pwede pala yung test na gano'n. Okay. Pero in addition, DJ, kung okay. talagang gusto nilang makasiguro, pwede nilang ipasubject sa quantitative analysis ang any material na nagdududa sila na may presence of asbestos dahil sa may mga laboratory naman na nagkoconduct ng analysis of the presence of asbestos in the material. Yun po siguro ang mas sigurado. No? Oo, mas sigurado. Pag analyze po sa ating mga laboratory. Next po, from um, Remy Villegas Jr. of Daewoo ENC. Um, hmm. Ang sinasabi niya po dito ay paano po ang mga establishment na hindi nagde-declare na ang mga materials nila ay may asbestos content? What are the measures and penalties for this company for type of unsafe practice? Maaaring yung mga company na yon ay baka wala silang knowledge talaga na ang kanilang mga gamit na material ay merong asbesto. So, pwede nga gawin ng mga company na yon ay ipatest nila yung mga materials na ginamit nila no sa pag-construct, for example, ng kanilang mga buildings, mapasubject sa test para ma-insure kung may asbestos. Ngayon, in relation naman, kung sinasabing... Uh, alam nila na merong asbestos at hindi sumusunod. Uh, ang ano naman kasi pag naka-install ang ating mga asbestos containing materials, kung wala naman pong mga uh, activities para mag-release ng fiber. So for, for example, walang uh, tinatawag na mga sanding or yung dismantling, hindi po madi-disturb ang asbestos fiber sa material. So wala tayong problema. So ang kailangan lang kung sa tumagal na ng panahon na matagal na naka-install, for example, more than 20 years na no, yung proper maintenance nitong ating mga asbestos containing materials. So in relation to that, para hindi ma-release ang mga asbestos fibers ay kailangan ipipinturahan natin no para ma-maintain natin na intact ang fibers asbestos containing materials. Next po, what do I do if unexpectedly I come across potential asbestos during my work from Mr. Rene Ibasco? So, ibig sabihin, parang very positive siya na may asbestos, no? So, kailangan yung level of protection, no? In terms of paggamit ng required personal protective equipment. So, as much as possible, na-encounter lang niya, posible bang napadaan lang siya o siya mismo ay mag-handle ng asbestos. 
So kung ang insenaryo ay napadaan lang siya doon sa isang activity na merong asbestos, dapat meron din siyang uh, pertinent PPE na gamit. Pero kung siya talaga yung gumagamit no ng asbestos containing material yung sinasabi yung pinakita ko kaninang naka-cover all kasi kung in relation to dismantling dapat kumpleto ang kanyang PPE no from head to foot So tandaan natin po sa manu sa manufacturing side po kasi na kung saan gumagamit ng asbestos lahat po ng nai-import natin na asbestos ay uh, partially wet hindi po nagde-deliver ng dry asbestos fiber. It is partially wet. Kaya kung ginagamit sa manufacturing during mixing, no, uh, imi-mix kasi siya sa cement at sa buhangin, it is partially wet. So, yung sinasabi nating potential release ay maaring uh, controlled na kasi wet yung asbestos fibers. Okay. Thank you po. Next question po from Ms. Cherry Calabia of Trinovate. Trinovate, okay. is there any specific competency-based training requirements for the asbestos removal and installation of all involved in asbestos work and safety officers who will be monitoring the asbestos work compliance? Okay po. So isa po sa requirement ay yung tinatawag nating uh, training no uh, pertaining to asbestos handling or asbestos management so safe handling and management of asbestos required po yan sa safety officer required din do sa mga workers na involved sa activities na naghahandle ng asbestos next po from Mr. Marwin Vincent Balba do we have an accredited service provider for handling and disposing asbestos contaminated materials? Okay po. So pertaining to accredited uh, service provider for disposal, meron po tayong list na makikita natin sa website ng Environmental Management Bureau. So yun lang po ang kukontakin natin kung tayo ay magpapadispose ng mga asbestos waste. Kasi hindi po tayo basta-basta pwedeng mag-dispose at our own uh, discretion. So kailangan po contact tayo ng accredited uh, disposal uh, provider for asbestos. In connection po with that, from the Pag-asa Steelworks Incorporated, Ma'am Teresita de Villa, ang question niya po is, anong permit ang kailangan? pag magdi-dismantle at magde-dispose ng mga roof containing asbestos. So yan po ay dahil sa kokontak na nga tayo ng accredited provider no. So sa DNR po kasi kinukuha ang permit in terms of uh, uh, dismantling. Next question po natin. Ang WEM po ba ay mandatory na i-comply ng bawat company? If yes po, anong department order ang nagsasabi na mandatory po siya? Ang WEM po ay talagang requirement. This pertains to Rule 1070 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standards. Plus, in relation to asbestos exposure, mandatory din po na requirement aside from training ang pagkaroon ng exposure assessment to asbestos na mga dismantlers or manufacturing na merong paggamit ng asbestos. Requirement po yan. So, ang pagdating po sa dismantling, ang requirement natin ng work environment measurement is dapat bago magsimula ang dismantling, meron tayong measurement. During the dismantling, meron tayong work environment measurement. And after the dismantling, meron din tayong measurement to ensure that uh, nalinis na talaga ang work site kung saan na-handle, nag-undergo ng dismantling para masabi natin even the community is protected from the hazards of asbestos. Maraming salamat po. Next question po from Mr. Ismael Lambino. Required po ba na may industrial hygienist sa mga company na may asbestos products? Okay, so pagdating po doon sa ating requirements sa industrial hygienist, 
wala pa naman po kasing batas or rules or any regulation na nagsasabi na required ang industrial hygienist. So ngayon po, uh, karamihan po sa mga existing companies or industries, the management always designates the safety officer to function likewise as industrial hygienist of the company. So ganun po yung Uh, realidad sa kasalukuyang panahon. So maraming trabaho ang safety officer. So tinatrabaho din niya ang pagiging industrial hygienist. Sometimes tinatrabaho din niya ang pagiging pollution control officer. Maraming salamat po. Ito po ay may connection po doon sa dismantling. Ano, Mamilagba from okay, Mr. Po. Joel Marcelo Mejia. No, ang gumagawa sila po ng mga housing projects during concrete dismantling using jackhammer. It creates dust. Is the dust and concrete here considered as bestos? Dust from concrete? Opo, yung pong siguro nagtitibag po sila ng um, mga pader. Mga ah, okay. So pagka mga pader, uh, pwede naman nating masabing walang... Asbestos yon, Unless ang ruling na tinitignan natin, so sinasabi nga, pag yun daw mga buildings or any establishment that was constructed around uh, 50 years ago, so yon pwede pa nating ma-assume na baka may presence ng asbestos. Pero yung mga recent lang na ano, This was the time na regulated na rin kasi ang paggamit ng asbestos. So pwede nating masabing walang asbestos yon Yung mga bago lang pero i-dismantle na agad. Yung mga concrete. Kasi concrete okay. po yung tanong niya. So I was assuming oh, na yung mga kalimit. Oo, concrete wall eh. Oh, oh. Next question po. Paano po? Ah, okay. Okay. Mga matagal na na asbestos roofing, di ba dapat, I think po, no, ang tanong niya po is dapat daw bang palitan na ang mga matagal na na asbestos roofing from okay. UP office of the, uh, Sir Philip Almeida. Okay, so yung mga asbestos roofing, syempre part ng ating programa no, ng safety and health program, meron tayong tinatawag na inspection of our facilities. So during inspection, so kasama sa inspect natin yung mga roofing, uh, roofing uh, asbestos containing materials na yan, pagka nakita natin na uh, subukan yung hawakan, no? pagka parang nagpupulbos na siya, so madali na siyang madurog using... By using just your hand, ibig sabihin po nagiging friable na ang roofing material na yan. So that's the time na talagang pwede na nating isuggest sa ating management o sa owner ng ating company na isubject na na palitan. Pero kung properly maintained, no, pag hinawakan nyo ay hindi naman siya talaga friable. So pwede pa rin naman nating papinturahan para ma-encapsulate pa natin yung mga possible na asbestos fiber na present doon sa mga roofing material na yon. Thank you po. That was from Mr. Um, Philip Almeida of the UP Office of Campus Architect. Okay. Next question po. Ang materials po ba ng insulation sheet na nilalagay sa ceiling ay asbestos? Uh, sa pagkakaalam ko po ay hindi. So marami pong klase ng Insulation material, no? Ang isang very common ay yung tinatawag natin parang kulay yellow na uh, which is ang component nun ay meron siyang silica. So sabi natin pagka silica, it is glass-like property, no? So kung nagkakat kayo ng klase ng insulation material na yon, pag kumapit sa skin natin, nangangati tayo kaya... Once you rub your skin, ay parang nagsusugat because of the silica content. And then yung ginagamit ngayon na uh, construction material for insulation sa ceiling, yung meron siyang, ang pinaka material niya ay parang kulay silver, ang pinaka uh, boat face, no? and then kulay white, yung pinaka nasa loob ng insulation material. I don't think merong asbestos yun kasi it's more of a synthetic material. Oh. Huh. From Mr. Philip Ladrillo of Converge, do we need approval from you if we use materials with asbestos? Baka hindi po sa OSHC. 
ano po ma'am Melba ang approval na kailangan? Uh, yun namang choice ng paggamit ng mga material with asbestos containing material ay choice ng owner or choice ng kung sino man nagagamit. But ang sinasabi natin, uh, you have to ensure that the, the purchase of that material, kung alam nyo may asbestos, ay merong kaakibat na ipoprovide sa inyo na safety data sheet na nagpapatunay na talagang may presence ng asbestos doon sa material na inyong binili. And then, syempre, yung pag-manage, no? pag-maintain ng material na ginamit, for example, na-install na sa ating establishment, ay uh, obligasyon na rin ng employer o ng may-ari ng establishment ang proper maintenance of that particular material. Oh, may list po ba tayo ng mga buildings in the Philippines na may asbestos-containing materials kahit yung mga high-risk lang pa Mr. Arnold Zoleta? Oh, unfortunately, wala po kaming maipro-provide na list ng mga establishment na gumamit ng asbestos-containing uh, materials. So, pero sa pagkakaalam ko, merong mga ilan-ilan na alam kong nag-install no? yung ating Mactan Airport. Gumapit po iyan ng mga wall boards na merong uh, content ng asbestos-containing material. Pero other than that, wala na po akong maibibigay sa inyo na ibang establishment na meron. So kaya para ma-ensure natin. So karamihan po na nagre-request no para mawala na yung pag-iisip nila kung may asbestos ang kanilang building. So kumukuha po sila ng kapirasong part ng mga material na yon at pinapatest po nila para magaranti nila na uh, may presence ba o wala ng asbestos sa kanilang mga building. So ganun po yung nagiging proseso ng mga establishment para ma-ensure nila kung may presence na asbestos sa kanilang lugar. Thank you, Ma'am Melds. Uh, from Mr. Jesus Sahorda, may asbestos po ba ang aluminum and glass? Aluminum, ano yon? Aluminum and glass po. Ah, aluminum and glass. Pagka po glass, silica-based din yan. Sa aluminum po, syempre kasi aluminum nga, eh, made of aluminum material, palagay ko wala. How about po ang mga fire blankets na ginagamit ng mga welder? Question naman po yan from Mr. Rodrigo Remando. Uh, possibly po yung mga fire blanket ay merong ano, Uh, asbestos. Kasi nga, magandang suppressant ng fire ang asbestos textile. Uh, from Mr. Bren Roll, so about power tools, do they emit asbestos? Power tools? Opo. Nagulat din po ako rin sa power tools. Pero meron nga po bang iniimit na, pa, na asbestos ang mga power tools? And do we have data on it daw po? Kasi kung the material itself ng power tools uh, actually made of ano uh, mga metal, di ba? Pero kung itong mga power tool ay ginagamit during dismantling, yan yung isang dahilan para magkaroon ng dispersion ng asbestos fibers. Kaya nga po meron tayong precaution in the use of power-driven tools during dismantling. So ang nire-recommend nga po kasi karamihan naman po ng mga naka-install na asbestos-containing materials ay naka-screw. Kaya as much as possible, Uh, pang screw lamang ang ginagamit at walang uh, walang tinatawag na yung pagpupukpok or paggamit nga ng mga power tools para maiwasan natin yung pag-release ng asbestos fiber during dismantling. Tumatanggap pa rin po ba tayo ng mga asbestos containing material kahit pinagbabawal na itong gamitin sa lahat ng materials hindi lang sa Pilipinas kundi sa ibang bansa? Okay. So gusto ko lang i-correct no. Sa kasalukuyan po, regulated ang paggamit ng chrysotile type of asbestos. So sa kasalukuyan din po, meron tayong around uh, 17 to 18 companies na they still use the chrysotile type of asbestos in their products but Apparently, ang ruling natin, hindi na pwedeng mag-create ng new companies 
para gagamit pa ng chrysotile type of asbestos. So, regulated lang po. May mga band tayo na type ng asbestos. Ito po yung tinatawag nating brown asbestos and blue asbestos. Band na po yan. So, karamihan na rin po ng mga countries abroad, marami na pong pagbaban sa asbestos. Pero, ang ini-import lang po natin is the chrysotile type of asbestos na siyang tinatanggap natin sa Pilipinas that is also regulated. Salamat po. Ang mga susunod po nating tanong ay may kinalaman po sa pagkakasakit ng ating mga workers. Ako, hindi ako doktor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ang tanong po ni Ma'am Asinit o Darby, what are the provisions on the medical surveillance for workers using asbestos? Okay, hindi ba nailatag ko naman kanina yung yes, mga component po, po. ng mga medical surveillance? So, iisa-isahin ko pa ba yun? <laughs> Yan yung mga reportorial requirements. Oo, oh, 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 kasama. Naman Nandun po. naman na lahat kanina. Diniscuss ko na actually lahat yun. Wala akong pinalagpas doon sa provisions. <laughs> Opo, oh, ano mga ano. Next question po. Ang reportorial requirement po ba ay applicable lamang once madiagnose na ang workers na mayroong sak Work-related illness due to exposure to asbestos. Actually, hindi lamang yung nagkasakit. Kasi part of the monitoring, di ba, isa yung requirement ng work environment measurement, no? submission, isa yung requirement ng pre-employment, uh, tapos annual uh, medical exam. So sa annual medical exam, pwede nating sabihin, wala pa naman siyang existing na sakit but then requirement natin na magkaroon ng annual medical exam so it's not uh, only na doon sa nagkasakit na so in kasi dahil nga classified as hazardous ang asbestos so yung close monitoring whether may sakit na or wala or wala pa part po yun doon sa ating mga reportorial requirements next question the con sa decontamination process ng tao na na-involve sa asbestos at equipment, ano ang specific standard na dapat sundin ng company? Okay. So, una puntahan muna natin yung mismong, uh, let's say, cubicle. Kasi possibly, uh, hindi naman ganun kalaki ang ating decontamination area. no? So, sa decontamination area na cubicle, so restricted ang entry. So, as much as possible, yung decontamination area, walang mga small openings. no? And then, doon na nga papasok ang worker, kung for example, after the dismantling activity, pagpasok ng worker doon, doon siya maglilinis ng katawan. And we assume that even the clothing na ginamit niya, ay merong asbesto. So, has, as much as possible, doon na rin niya lalabhan. Hindi na niya iuuwi sa bahay yung working clothes na ginamit niya. Kung hindi pa tapos within the day at ang dismantling, so yun na rin yung posibleng gagamitin niya sa mga succeeding days na na tinutuloy pa ang dismantling. And then, uh, so isa sa requirement sa loob ng decontamination room yung kanilang washroom no? na pwedeng paglinisan ng mga workers. And then, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, specific waste bin sa mga ginamit nilang PPE because the PPE that they use is considered also as hazardous at isinasama na yan sa na dismantle na mga asbestos containing materials for disposal. Oh, yan regarding po doon sa PPE. Can an N95 respirator be temporary PPE if no other respirator is available? Temporary pero ang requirement natin yung uh, di ba half face na dalawa yung pinaka cartridge natin. May mga nabibili naman, may mga available naman sa market. So wag na nating isugal kasi ang N95 is yung tinatawag natin ang gamit niya is do sa regular lang na nuisance dust, no? Hindi siya kasali sa asbestos. Delikado po ang ma-expose ma dito sa asbestos. Meron pa pong tanong from Mr. Mark Garcia of Mr. Quickie Corporation. Yung mga gas range po na sinauna ay may mga asbestos wires. Ano po ang pwedeng ipalit sa asbestos wires? Papalitan ba o ano o i-insulate 
pa. Just in case. Kasi... Sa uh, range po na sinauna, so baka posible din po na medyo um, luma na rin po yung insulation. Di ba? Nagbabakbak po yan pagka oo. luma. Kasi uh, tandaan natin, no? unahin natin yung kinatawag nating level of safety. So siguro kasi ako, kagaya ko, pag kami na-observe ako sa stove ko, sa kalan na uh, ganun, pinapalitan ko na eh. Mahirap pang i-maintain na sumugal in relation to safety. So, okay. mahirap din baka mamaya yung naiisip natin na material na gagamitin natin as insulation doon sa kung anong parte yan ng ating uh, kalan, eh, baka naman hindi din siya appropriate para okay. doon sa naisip nating substitute for that material itself. question po from kadugtong siya rin po yung nagtanong pala. Meron po kasing nagbibenta ng asbestos wires sa Raon. Aha, ah, exposed talaga? ba ang mga tao ng mga supplier nito? So, as long as the material, no, the asbestos fiber ay intact, walang ano na ma-release yet sa air. So, para ma-release sa air, kunwari ikakat natin tong mga asbestos wire So that's the time na magkakaroon siya ng dispersion sa air ng asbestos fibers. Pero kung intact, palagay ko wala naman tayong problema. Next question po from High Advanced Philippines Incorporated, Mr. Richard Carizon. What standards should we follow? The DNR standard which is 2 fibers per cc or the OSH standards which is 0.1 fibers per cc? Okay, sir, just gusto ko lamang i-correct, no? Meron tayong consult uh, consultation, no, different agencies. So, nabago na po na amend na po yung 2 fiber per cc. So, in collaboration niya sa members ng IASE, no? So, 0.1 fiber per cc na po talaga ang ginagamit natin. Yan na rin po ang pinofollow ng DNR and other ag government agencies. Meron na po pala ang um, collaboration no at pag-iisa po okay. dito. Ha. Huh. Do we need to prepare an asbestos abatement plan prior to the activity for Mr. Anthony Romasanta? Actually, ang gumagawa ng asbestos abatement plan na sinasubmit ay yung mga uh, service provider. So, kung kayo ay kukontak ng service provider, isa yun sa dapat na requirement, na criteria, na hihingin nyo aside from being accredited. Mayroon po ulit tanong tungkol sa mga nagkocontain ng asbestos. Ang fiberglass fiber po ba ay mayroong asbestos? Wala pong asbestos ang fiberglass kasi po ang component niya ay basically silica. May possibility po ba na may asbestos yung raw materials like abrasive products such as flat grinding disc? Grinding disc? Parang wala akong idea. Isa-search ko, no? Kung ano yung component ng mga grinding disc. So, binigyan mo ako ngayon na assignment. <laughs> yes po. Sige, babalikan po natin yan after ma-research ni Ma'am Melba. <laughs> wala akong idea sa grinding disc. Ito po, I think, na-discuss ito kanina ni Ma'am Melvan, no? From EEI Corporation, Mr. Jimmy Manala. Ano po ang extent ng effect ng asbestos sa ating health o health po ng tao may prolonged exposure? Okay, so, uh, ikokot ko lang, no? Yung mga statement ng mga iba naming mga nakausap na medical personnel. So, ang sinasabi, yung latency period kasi no matagal mo ng exposure sa asbestos bago maramdaman ang epekto ng pagkakasakit base sa exposure so usually common 20 years or more na exposure no bago magkaroon ng tinatawag nating uh, asbestos related diseases yes syempre ang unang naapektuhan na parte ay ang ating respiratory system yun ang naapektuhan. Kasi po, pag nalanghap natin ang asbestos fiber, uh, nadideposit po iyan sa ating baga at hindi na 
wala nang way para masabing ma excrete pa ng ating katawan. So, through the years, pag na na-accumulate sa ating baga, ito po ang pwedeng maging dahilan para makaform siya ng mga lumps or bukol sa ating baga na siyang isang cause ng ating pagkakasakit. Ganun po yung mga statement ng mga medical personnel. Meron din pong nagtatanong kung nakakaroon din po ba ng skin, ang effect sa skin kapag dumikit ang asbestos fibers. Okay, so may mga na-interview po kami ng mga workers no, na, na nagtatrabaho sa mga industries na gumagamit ng asbestos uh, sa maniwala kayo sa hindi, ipapakita pa sa amin no, na ipinapahid pa nila sa kanilang skin yung uh, raw materials na asbestos. Wala naman daw pong epekto. Kaya lang siguro depende rin sa resistance ng katawan ng tao. No? Baka mamaya eh. May mga tao mataas ang resistance, may mga tao namang mababa ang resistance. So, case-to-case -case basis din siguro. Okay. Ah, ito po yung isang may tanong. May standard permissible exposure level din po ba for asbestos? I think ito po yung diniscuss nyo kanina na threshold limit. Uh -huh. Oo, oh. yan yun. Yung 0.1 fiber per cube. Centimeter. Okay. Next po, meron po ba ang agency sa Pilipinas na nagbibigay ng training or accreditation on uh, bestos? Actually po, is ang Occupational Safety and Health Center po ay nagbibigay ng mga specialized training kasi upon request. Kasi wala po kaming regular training na pinoprovide in relation to asbestos uh, safe management no in the workplace so request uh, basis po no uh, sa actually po nakapag-provide kami sa isang uh, telecommunication no yung nag-install ng mga uh, ano sa MRT nag-request po sila ng asbestos training na provide na naman po ng occupational safety and health center so request lang po And then baka po ma-schedule natin yung training. Ito, ayan, makakasakali yung training po. Hmm. As we already have an industrial hygienist, can we identify the respective role and responsibilities of safety officers and industrial hygienists with respect to asbestos management at the plant site? Okay, so ang magiging role po ng as, uh, industrial hygienist sa uh, asbestos management, so in relation to proper identification no, ng mga material na potentially may presence ng asbestos, part po yan ng trabaho ng industrial hygienist. And then in terms of scheduling, yung pagkukonduct ng ating exposure assessment, the work environment measurement, it is the role of Uh, industrial hygienist. And then in terms of the level of protection, ano ba yung mga pwedeng controls na dapat ipoprovide natin kung meron tayong na-assess o na-identify na mga areas na meron presence na asbestos, ang industrial hygienist po ang magbibigay ng mga uh, control measures para ma-address ang exposure to Uh, asbestos. So, syempre, the safety officer kasi hindi lamang asbestos ang focus niyan. Marami pang ibang aspeto na tinatrabaho ang uh, safety officer. So, tandaan po natin as the definition of industrial hygiene, no recognition, evaluation, and control of asbestos in your company. Yes, po, salamat. In connection po dyan, sa safety officer, ano po, sabi ni Mr. Danilo Cabrera, Meron po bang area requirement ang safety officer to be present in demolition of existing structure? Hindi hmm, ko po masyado na gets yung tanong. Siguro po ang... Uh, siguro, uh, uh, in relation to ano, supervision, so kailangan updated ang safety officer in relation to the ongoing dismantling activities. Pero hindi naman siguro necessary na mag stay siya within the area. But then kung mag stay siya dun sa dismantling area, ensure that the proper PPE na kung anong meron ang mga workers ay ganun din ang kanyang isusuot. Hindi, dadaan din siya sa decontamination area. 
po. Lahat po syempre nung naging process dahil may exposure din po siya. Okay. Next po from Mr. Mike Lagria. Kiwi Geothermal Plant just abandoned the pipe with asbestos in most of the community. Liable po ba sila sa pagkakasakit ng mga tao sa community? Nako po, hindi ko hindi ko yata masasagot yung liability. <laughs> no? Pero ang masasabi ko, dapat yung mga insulation material ay magawa nila ng paraan na malikom at maipadispose ng ayos. Yun ang kanilang isang liability. Yeah, I think that is the last question already. Yung iba po, naulit na kanina, nasagot okay. na po ni Ma'am Melba. So maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Melba, sa inyong um, very comprehensive, very informative discussion at pagsagot po ng mga katanungan. Maraming salamat din sa inyong interes at pakikinig. Punta na po tayo sa ating um, closing remarks. Let us welcome our Deputy Executive Director, Ma'am Connie Santo Tomas. Good morning, Ma'am Connie. Good morning, DJ. Salamat. At magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, pasalamatan po natin ang ating uh, magaling na resource person, uh, si Engineer Melba Marasiga. You know? uh, very comprehensive and discussion ng uh, ating uh, about asbestos at ang ating BO154-16 safety and health standards on the use and management of asbestos in the workplace. At of course, uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat na uh, dumalo dito sa ating uh, uh, webinar series. Mag-osh up tayo. So sabi nga po na ang Executive Director, uh, ito po ay prelude sa upcoming National Occupational Safety and Health Congress this coming September 28, 2930. Okay, so uh, I think sa tingin ko po napaka-productive po ng ating uh, uh, webinar ngayon ano, dahil uh, marami pong katanungan ninyo ang nasagot ng ating uh, uh, resource person at uh, alam po natin na uh, interesado po tayong malaman ang, ang uh, tungkol dito sa asbestos dahil um, alam po natin na meron tong masamang epekto sa ating kalusugan kung ito po ay uh, hindi natin ma, uh, uh, kung ito po ay malanghap nga ng ating mga magagawa at uh, at hindi maisagawa yung tamang uh, programa para po makaiwas dito sa exposure sa mga asbestos containing materials. Okay? So uh, sa inyo po lahat, sana po ay uh, lagi kayong uh, tumutok dito sa aming uh, webinar series at uh, marami pong uh, informasyon uh, about occupational safety and health ang uh, ibibigay po ng, ng OSHC sa inyo. Okay? So Again, sa ngalan po ng aming Executive Director, si Engineer Noel Binag, maraming salamat po at uh, lagi po tayong mag-iingat. Okay. Okay. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Connie, and maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng ating mga